Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mark Parham. I'm an entrepreneur and property investor. And in this video, we're going to be discussing what it costs and takes to set up a HMO property. These are great for cash flow. I've got nine of them myself. They are absolutely fantastic, but you need to know what it costs and what it takes to run these successfully. Now, before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you want to have a one-to-one -one consultation with me, these are being offered free of charge. Have a look in the description. There's a link. You can click through to my website and me and you, we can have a one-to-one -one conversation about whatever might be on your mind. And if I could also ask you guys to please give this video a big like, it really helps me out with the algorithm. My marketing guy said that the last one got 300 views in two days, purely because you guys liked it. So have you done it? Please, thank you so much. It doesn't cost anything to do. Now let's get into the video. Let's have a look at exactly what it takes to set up these HMOs. So hi guys and welcome to the studio. Let's go through the costs involved in setting up the HMO first of all. And we'll do this in two parts. We'll do set up and then we'll do running costs. And then we'll have a look at an example of the soil profit that you can expect and a couple of the deals that I've got and that'll give you a good idea of what I'm achieving. So first of all, you're gonna to need to purchase a property. Now I can't tell you how much that property is gonna be. It depends on where you're looking at and what size the property is. But you're gonna to need to purchase a property, you're gonna to need to do your legals on it and you're gonna to need to pay your stamp duty. So those are three things that are pretty ubiquitous no matter where you're buying and no matter what you're buying. So you're gonna to have to take care of those and those are a complete open book. Now, now, when it comes to a HMO though, this is where we can get specific. So first of all, I would say that your furniture is about 750 pounds a room. And if you book a call with me, you can always ask me who my furniture supplier is, and I'm more than happy to pass their details to you. Um, but furniture, 750 pounds a room, that's about right. Now, in terms of fire safety, now it depends on what sort of building you're doing. So if you're doing a small HMO and you just want integrated smoke alarms on each floor and a heat detector in your kitchen, then you'd be looking 250, 350, 400 pounds, something like that. If you're looking for a full panel system, which is fully maintained, you might be looking up towards 2000 pounds, but they generally only come in when you're looking at licensed HMOs. And by licensed, I mean five bedrooms or more, or five occupiers or more. And I can't say this enough. If you have a four bedroom HMO and you put a couple in one of the bedrooms, you then become licensable. And that's one of the rookie errors that people make. So fire alarms anywhere from sort of 250 to 2000 is a reasonable estimation, bearing in mind that you're only going to go into the thousands when you're looking at commercial systems. Fire doors, now we put fire doors in all of our HMOs and the four beds really don't have to have them legally. It's my belief that safety is important and the costs are fairly minimal. We're looking at 200 to 250 pounds per door. And how long does a door last you? I mean, years, right? We're not talking about something that you change every couple of months. So we take the opportunity whenever we're setting up a HMO to put fire doors in, and we also put key code locks on, and that means that people can't lose the key and we can change the code at the end of each tenancy. It makes it really, really easy, and that is a top tip for you. In terms of fire doors, obviously you need to count the amount of doors you're gonna need. I don't know that without looking at your property, but 200 to 250 per door is about right. Now we're starting to look more towards the the licensing fees. So at the point where you're gonna have five individual tenants or more, you're gonna be looking at paying a license. Now, in the areas that I operate, these are around about 750 to 1,000 pounds for five years. I've just done one recently and it was 850 pounds. So just to give you a ballpark figure, but you'll need to check with your local authority of what that license will be. And it normally entails them coming out, having a look at the property, suggesting any changes you might need to do. You'll have to do a fire risk assessment, for example, but they're very, very straightforward forms. Don't be put off with the licensing process. It's not that hard. So the last thing I've put on this list is planning. Now, once you get to seven bedrooms above, or if you're looking to do it in an area with Article 4, you're gonna to need to pay a planning fee and get planning permission to change the use of the building. Now, you can have a look in your local area by searching this really good site called Google to find out if Article 4 is in your area. And if it is, you'll need to get planning. But also, if you're gonna do seven bedrooms or more, you'll also need to get planning. I would recommend working with a planning consultant. Um, you're gonna be looking anywhere from putting in an application, but of a few hundred pounds, but all the way up 
up to 10, 20, 30 thousand once you're getting consultants involved and once you're getting architects. So it's such an open-ended book depending on the scope of your project. But I would suggest that normally to get planning, a few thousand pounds is in the right ballpark unless you're paying big professional fees. The other thing you're going to need to do, and I've forgotten to put it on my list, is furnish the communal areas. Now what we do is we tend to put a TV on the wall and we give a Netflix subscription. Here's another top tip for you, you're going to love this one. If you put terrestrial TV in, every single room has to pay an individual license. If you put streaming services in, no TV license required. And at £140 per room, that could be a big chunk of your profit gone. So we put a TV on the wall, we put a sofa in the communal area, we make sure we've got ample fridge freezer space. And I said, it, I would say, if you budgeted 1,500 pounds for making your communal areas nice, you're in the right ballpark. You can pick up a nice sofa, nice table and chairs, TV on the wall, fridge freezer, and 1,500 pounds is gonna be about right. So as you can see, people think that the furniture and all this is gonna be quite prohibitively expensive in setting up HMOs. But when your return is absolutely supercharged, as you will see when I look at the costs of running the HMO and the returns you can receive, it's excellent value for money. A lot of this stuff you're not gonna be changing regularly. And if you do need to, you're quite often gonna be taking it out of tenants' deposits. So the furniture in the room is gonna last years. The fire alarms are gonna last years. The fire doors. I don't remember the last time I changed a door. The license, five years at 850 and the planning lasts forever. So we are looking at short-term investments for a long-term gain. So now we've had a look at what it costs to set up the HMO. Let's have a look at cost of the running costs. Now I understand my audience and thank you so much for being mature. You understand that I have to pick an area and focus on that. Now, I understand that there's areas where we can buy cheaper HMOs, but what I wanted to do was pick two comparable properties that I, or people that I know, own in the same town with the same sort of costs, and that way we can compare the returns of a four bed and a six bed. So I picked these two properties with that in mind. Now I understand you can buy a four bed HMO in Middlesbrough for 80K and get a much better return on investment. I completely understand that. But we're just gonna focus on this so that we've got one example of a four bed comparable with a six bed and you can transpose that to the area that you're interested in. So running costs on a four bed, assuming a purchase price of 175, would be a mortgage of 328 pounds a month. Um, bills of between 100 and 120, and I've got a Netflix subscription on there of 12 pounds, which we put in all our properties. Again, top tip on that one. Um, council tax of about 100 pounds, insurance of 15 pounds a month, management of 160 pounds a month, and voids and maintenance of 160 pounds a month. So if you look at a cash return, it'd be about 875. Once you factor in voids and maintenance, 715 per calendar month. Now. This is an excellent return on investment for me because I bought this particular property for 125,000 and I spent 15,000 doing it up and refinanced most of my money back out. So this property is one of mine and it's a fantastic deal. Now, if we compare that to a six bed that's owned by one of my friends, he also has a fantastic deal because he bought this for 157. He spent 20,000, refinanced it at 220, got most of his money back out. But that said, he's getting much more rent than I am. He's getting 2,500 pounds a month rent. His mortgage is 412, his Netflix, exactly the same as mine. His bills, 20 quid more a month. You know, it's, it's not reflective of the extra rent that you receive. He has council tax that's slightly larger because it's a slightly larger house. His insurance is about the same. His management fees are reflective of the rent, so 250 and 250 in voids. But if we look at his cash return, he's getting 1,600 pounds a month. And I actually had him on the phone just before I did this video, and I was asking him about this property just so I got a feel for what we were going to talk about. And he said, yes, £1,600 a month is roughly what he takes. He doesn't have many voids. It was brand new done, so he hasn't got any maintenance really. So he's netting about £1,600 a month on this one. And the last thing I would say is you, if you were to compare these two and buy them today and buy them with a mortgage, there would only be a 15K difference in the price of the deposit and the stamp duty that you'd need to put down. So considering you return almost double, almost double the return for 15K, 
you can see that six beds perform so much better than four beds. Now, am I saying that four beds are, are no a good idea? No, I've got six or seven of these and they are great. I would say it depends on the deal. If you can buy something, add value, refinance your money back out, you're gonna be on to a winner. Four or six bed, it doesn't matter. But HMOs, these are the cash cows that we have. These just keep printing money month in, month out. So I highly recommend the HMO model to you. So have you got any questions? If you have, put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. I answer every single question that ever comes up. And if this video has been useful, give it a big thumbs up. I know I asked earlier on and I'm sure you've already liked it. I do appreciate it. Otherwise, I've been Mark Parham. I upload every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and I'll see you again on Monday.